Hi, this is Ollie from Bird's Eye View, and today we're going to be having a look at the Iris by 3D Robotics. In this review, I'm going to try and get as in-depth as possible, and cover as much as I can about the Iris. Let's start with the good. The overall design of the Iris is built to look really impressive and professional, while also allowing plenty of space for modifications inside. The Tarot 2D gimbal is really nice. It works really well, and takes all the jelly out of the video. The gimbal is strong enough to allow you to fit a filter, but the gimbal has a problem where the gimbal has been not factory configured correctly, so it gives a jello look which it vibrates and it's not very good. Now I'm going to show you how to take off. First, turn the remote on, flick the stick into loiter, plug the battery into the iris, press the arm button, then hold the left stick to the right lower corner until the motor spin up. Then simply move the throttle above 50% and it will rise. Then put the stick back into the centre and the right stick to move around. Moving on to the main controller, the Pixel is really good for the iris. It's compact and allows plenty of expandability, including adding OSD. The software is fully open source, but the unit itself is made by 3D Robotics. The ground link with the computer and tablet is really great, but it does have its flaws, like often crashing a poor tablet and an error which is occurring to myself, which the numbers on the left hand side of the computer program all show and hold numbers, which is really bad for the voltage, because I usually land on 10.8 volts, but I looked at the computer and the volts were at 10. Well later the computer suddenly said, warning, battery at 10.4, so I suddenly brought the iris back before the doomed failsafe sets in. More on that later. So here's a tablet for your Droid Planner 2. Here's what it looks like when you're in the home view, and here's what the Mac APM Planner looks like. It's a rather complex and hard setup to waypoints. This is the setup stage here. You can change all the defaults, like what happens if you run low on battery. It can just land no matter where you are, which is really bad if you're over water or trees. You can also set the low battery fail safe, because I decided to set it low, because I think it's best to lose a battery than lose a quad. Now onto the weight. The Iris is really heavy, it weighs a ton. By a ton I mean one, about a kilogram and three quarters. Now for a quadcopter that's really heavy. Just to compare, the Phantom is 1,030 grams. The DJI F450 is 125 grams. Because the Iris is so heavy, it suffers a poor flight time with the stock battery. Only a few minutes. But with the 5,000 milliamps battery, you can get over 5 minutes, which is more acceptable, but by no means the industry standard. When using a heavy battery of a heavy quadcopter, that equals hot motors and slow reactions. As I mentioned previously, the Iris can perform autonomous capabilities, including automatic takeoff and landing, custom GPS assisted missions, assisted flying, and return to launch. It performs these very well with much accuracy. Really cool thing is that when you are flying an autonomous mission, you still have control to control the gimbal and spin left and right, allowing you to get the perfect shot. You are able to change the default option if you run low on battery comes pre-configured to automatically land on the spot which is really bad considering it is in mode land you cannot exit the mode. Because of this I decided to change the default to return to launch. But this, and here's the big but, when I was low on battery it travelled above my takeoff point and it assembled fast and flipped onto the back while it was on the gravel which completely trashed all of the propellers. My personal recommendation is to set the battery failsafe at a low number, like 10 volts, because it's better to lose a battery than to lose your quadcopter. Now on to customer support. I've had a few problems with my Iris before, so I contacted help at 3drobotics.com, and they are always fairly fast, even though I live in England. They're always very helpful and generous, giving friendly, human-like responses. Now on to the Iris community. 3D Robotics recommends using DIYDrones.com but I personally recommend using a Facebook page called 3D Robotics Iris Owners Page. It's small with under 600 members, but the members are all very willing to help. The link for this page is available in the description below. The included remote is called the FSTH9X. It's nicely weighted, but annoyingly the remote is not balanced. So when you let go of it and it's on the next strap, the back of the remote falls down, meaning that you always have to have your palms underneath the remote at all times. The remote also allows you to customise your name to the start screen, so if you lose it, it can be returned and also allowing you to set a stopwatch so that you can see how long you've been flying for. There are four main flight modes, including altitude hold, 
stabilize, loiter, and autonomous. Altitude hold is good for normal flying because you can go fast, but you do not have to give any left stick command to keep it in the same altitude. Stabilize, despite its name, is the least stable mode of all. It is more of a manual mode, which requires constant movement of all sticks to keep in the air. Loiter is basically GPS hold mode. It will limit the stick movement so you can only move slowly. This works well for filming. Autonomous mode also allows you to plot a mission on the tablet or PC, and then upload them to the drone, which is in auto mode, which will fly the loaded mission. And now onto the basic laws for these drones carry. When you're flying, you always have to have visual sight of line of the drone. You cannot go above 400 meters. Don't fly near people or their property. And don't fly for commercial reasons. Use upgradeability. The iris has plenty of space on the inside for upgrades, but you need to make sure that anything you put in that does not touch the Pixhawk or your fly characteristics may become bad. Here is how you set up an automatic waypoint mission. First, you set, select takeoff and the desired height. Then select where you want the first waypoint to be and how high. Then all you have to do is tap the rest of the waypoints. Now I'm going to show you how to perform an autonomous mission. First set up your waypoints on the tablet, turn on the remote, put it in loiter mode, then plug in the battery to the iris. Tap connect, load missions, then press the arm button, then hold left stick to the right lower corner until all of the motors spin up. Then flick the stick into auto and put the left stick into the middle until it goes up. You can now see that I have full control of left, right and gimbal movement. Now that the iris is flying autonomously, it is great for getting the perfect shot. The main problems of the iris is the previously noted issue in where the quadcopter falls fast when returning to launch. The GPS module gets interference from other parts in the quadcopter, so what you just need to do is get some tin foil, fold it over until you get just bigger than the GPS module, tape it on and it rectifies the problem, and of course, the rubbish flight times. Many other quadcopters such as the DJI Phantom, they can encounter flyaways, which is when the user loses control and the drone flies away, never to be seen again. This has not happened with the Iris, which is relieving. I personally would only recommend that an Iris is a second drone, because it's still in an unofficial beta mode, and if you don't know how to work these drones, you can end up in a lot of trouble. Thanks for watching this video, and be sure to subscribe to see more great videos.